Hello, everyone. My name is Myung Jin. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm really excited to be here to give a talk on the, uh, the, the work that I have been doing for the last you know, two years. Um, today, you know, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, uh, a topic related to how to adopt uh, uh, the emerging the federal learning technologies. So um, the, you know, we are actually living in a very exciting uh, time because of uh, you know the generative AI models uh, such as you know GPT or the, uh, Gemini recently. But the, today I will actually slightly uh, uh, touch upon the slightly different topic, uh, the which is uh, called the federated learning. For those who may not be uh, familiar with the uh, federated learning, I will first briefly introduce the uh, federated learning and then the shift gears towards the, uh, the challenges that, that we face to adopt the you know, new uh, the, the federal uh, practices and approaches. Then the, we'll, I will present uh, uh, some of the approaches that the, we took uh, and then finish my talk. Okay. So uh, what is the uh, federated learning? Federated learning is the uh, machine learning technique that builds a model collaboratively, collaboratively with the distributed data while keeping the data privacy. So you may be very, very familiar with the you know, centralized learning. All data is shipped to the cloud or the, you know, uh, some private data center. And then they use uh, a lot of resources for the training. That's, uh, that's a centralized uh, uh, learning. As opposed to the demo model, the, the federal learning actually involves the devices uh, which are the geo-distributed across you know, um, many different places. And then without the sharing the data, or the shipping it to the central location, the each uh, participants will do the training uh, with the local data. Okay, that's just kind of a, a very different model. So you may wonder what, where, uh, what is the use case of the the federal learning? The canonical use case that uh, you might be familiar with is a keyword recommendation. So when you actually use the um, your the mobile device with the keyboard uh, smart the, the virtual keyboard, uh, and whenever you type uh, some keywords, the, the, the keyboard actually make a recommendation on the next keyword. Uh, so that's actually driven by the uh, uh, machine learning model, uh, which is uh, trained through the you know, federal learning practice. Okay. So uh, I will actually walk through the very briefly about how the federal learning takes place. So let's say we have a bunch of uh, participants or the devices. And the, each device or the participants uh, maintains the, uh, some private or local data. Then the, by using the, uh, this local data, the participants will do the training and then build a local model. Then the, these local models will be shared with the uh, uh, central node called the aggregation node or the you know, parameter server. Then the parameter server will uh, aggregate the individual model, uh, the, the local models, and then build a global model. Then the global model will be shared again with the uh, participants. On top of the uh, global model, the, 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 uh, each participant will do the local training and the, this process uh, repeats until the certain criteria are met, uh, such as uh, you know, uh, certain accuracy or the certain number of rounds is, is over. So uh, the, this is you know, a light, slightly uh, deeper look at uh, with the, one of the famous, one of the most popular uh, algorithms uh, called the federated averaging. So on the client side or participant side, the local training uh, takes place by applying the uh, uh, stochastic the techniques such as a stochastic gradient descent. Then the, the once training is over, the weights will be sent to the uh, server. Then server will you know, initially will take uh, uh, select a certain number of clients at random. Then the, for each of uh, the selected clients, uh, it'll actually uh, receive the weights from the uh, participants. Once that is done, done, then in addition to that, it'll also use the you know, number of samples or data points used for, the, for, 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 for doing the, uh, the weighted averaging. So by here, this NK is the number of samples used by the particular uh, participants, uh, K, and then the MT is the total number of data samples used by the old, old participants. So with that, we can actually conduct a weighted averaging approach. Then the WT uh, plus one is the, uh, the, the a global model that can be used for the next round. Okay. So you may wonder why do we need the you know, federated learning, although I already mentioned that uh, you know, the federated learning is actually used by the, uh, 
uh, used for the keyword recommendation. So one part, one uh, the 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 challenge is what the the you know uh, need for the federal rail learning is the privacy and and uh, related to the privacy and the data sovereignty uh, issue. So you you don't you know in many cases in some cases the for example dealing with the medical uh, record so we don't want to share the such the data with the you know other hospitals or the users right. On the other hand, uh, the it may be a very ex expensive to send the data to the you know, central location. And then thirdly, if so none of these are issues, still the problem that faces by the organizations is that data silo problem. Even within the single organization, multiple teams may not uh, be able to easily share the, the, the data because of the internal policies and, and so on. It's, so even if data actually exists in the, the, in the cloud, so in order to solve this, uh, mitigate these challenges, the uh, federal learning may be a good uh, fit. So there are many different types of uh, federal learning since it's exception, right? We have a cross-device uh, federal learning, cross-silo FL, vertical FL, synchronous FL, asynchronous FL. There are a very large number of uh, the approaches uh, that exist today. Uh, and then the, you know, these uh, different approaches uh, there are more and more approaches are uh, proposed. So, one question we want to ask is, you know, as an ML practitioner, especially the federal learning uh, practitioner, how do you actually use uh, or choose uh, one of these and then experiment uh, uh, these things quickly? So, you know, to kind of uh, the, the facilitated is experimentation or the use of uh, the different uh, uh, federal learning technologies. We actually come up with the, uh, uh, we, we started a project called Flame, which is an you know, open source pro, uh, federal learning uh, project uh, uh, that is led by you know, Cisco Research, but it is a truly an you know, open source project. So if you actually visit uh, uh, our uh, repository uh, through the, this QR code or the URL, you can actually find out the more details. So the, I already alluded you know, what would be the challenge, but uh, today's conventional uh, FL has this uh, problem called the one size fits all. And uh, the, let's, say, let's say we, have, we want to actually train in a model with a simple two-tier topology. In a small scale, it may be uh, good enough, but the, as uh, the number of uh, partic participants increases, the, the, it may actually take uh, longer to, uh, for, for the model to converge, training converge. And also, it may be hard, hard to personalize a model. For example, if I want to maintain a model for the uh, participants in Europe versus participants in the US, it is, you know, with this simple architecture, it's, it's not the uh, problem straightforward. So you may want to actually use the you know, hierarchical topology where the, you have an uh, intermediate aggregator, which can actually maintain the uh, model for the particular group of users, and while the global aggregator can actually build the global model. And uh, we also did uh, some experiments uh, with the you know, various conditions, like uh, what if uh, the, there are stragglers, uh, or the clients may actually fail, or the aggregator or lead, leader node fail across different uh, schemes. I will not go over details about the individual schemes. Of, you know, we, we tested a classical FL, hi hierarchical FL, and hybrid FL. But the, the one key takeaway from this slide is that uh, depending on the conditions, experiments condition, the, each approach uh, actually leave, they ex exhibit the different performance metrics. Like you know, time to accuracy may be different, or the accuracy itself will be a different dep depending on the different approaches. So the, what are the challenges? We have uh, many potential uh, topologies, but which involve the uh, complex and various training approaches. But then the, the, the the framework uh, are not uh, the flexible or the, the extensible easily to support uh, these various uh, topologies. And then another problem is the, unlike the central running, the federated learning involves the, you know, how to deploy, uh, the problem of how to deploy and where to deploy and uh, what components. So we want to actually solve this pro these challenges or to mitigate these challenges by introducing the flame. Flame's uh, ultimate goal is to empower ML engineers by letting them focus on the, what they do best, which is the uh, model development, while the uh, Flame, act, 
the, the handles the uh, monitoring functionality, multi-cloud uh, support, uh, full tolerance, and so forth. So we already actually uh, support uh, various algorithms and topologies. Uh, Left-hand side shows the you know, uh, bunch of algorithms that uh, we actually implemented in our framework. And the right-hand side is the uh, different topologies uh, the, that the uh, user can actually uh, play and use. Um, the, these are the, all the you know, uh, available, but the, the most important thing is that the Flame actually exposes the APIs and uh, you know, the programming uh, paradigm so that the user can actually uh, extend the flame uh, easily. So recently we actually published our work in, the, a, conference, in a conference called the uh, ACM Symposium on Cloud Computing, uh, which was uh, published this year. So you can actually uh, the, look up the internet, uh, search the internet and find, uh, to find out our work more detail. So please uh, you know, visit uh, uh, the, the, I mean, the read uh, our paper for more details. So uh, the, now let me shift the gears uh, the, towards the, you know, more, uh, more details. The flame, the, we want to decouple the uh, ML code from the topology or the topology description in order to simplify the workload specification. So user need to, first of all, the think about the what topology they want, and then they, that can be actually expressed as the uh, a topology abstraction graph, which we call tag. Then the, our control plane will take the, the tag, and then the, you know, we'll actually expand the, uh, the tag into the real topology and the workers based on the specification. What if the you know, user wants to change the, uh, their, the, uh, the, the topology? Then the user need to update a tag, of course, you know, if we actually introduce new components, then the, the new components will be associated with some uh, code. But the, this basically enables the online update and the fast turnaround because the user doesn't need to actually change, you know, doesn't need to actually develop the, uh, the, the, the custom you know, uh, code at all. So um, the uh, tag uh, is represented with the two building blocks. One is the uh, role and channel. Role uh, defines the ML training behavior, therefore it is associated code. And then the uh, channel, you can think of it as the abstraction for the uh, communication. And the channel actually has the specific uh, 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 an attribute called the uh, group by, which allows the uh, clustering of workers uh, to support the, you know, different topologies. So I will not go over details, but uh, I will actually show how these uh, features are used uh, with uh, this uh, you know, sm small toy example. Let's say I want to actually build a hierarchical topology which has uh, two groups, and uh, this can be actually represented uh, with this uh, uh, tag representation. The, there are a bunch, bunch of things, but the, what the, you want to look at is this, uh, the data set group. There are, in this example, we have uh, uh, the west and the east group, and uh, the, each group has the two data sets, A, B, and the C, D. And then the, these, the uh, groups, group, there are, we specify these uh, group uh, grouping by using the group association and the group by uh, attributes. So since we have you know, four data sets, we need to actually the, need uh, uh, four workers, four trainers, and then the, each trainer basically inherit the you know, group information, and we have uh, two uh, groups, so we need to actually create uh, two uh, the intermediate aggregators. Then the, at the top, the, we only have global aggregator, and, and I mean, we only have one group, which is a default, and therefore we only need to create one uh, the global aggregator. So, this is the, you know, the very, very simple example, but the, we can actually, sub, uh, Oh, sorry. The before I actually move to that, uh, what if if you want to uh, the the uh, add more groups, right? So all we need to do is basically the introduce a new uh, group and then the associate you know the new group with the uh, data new data sets. Then the, we'll, the our system will automatically uh, reprovision the uh, the new 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 topology. So. Uh, in addition to the, you know, the, the example I showed, uh, we can actually easily uh, express the different topologies, like uh, you know, the distributed topology will be expressed with the uh, simple south loop, 
uh, edge or the you know hybrid approach uh, on the right hand side on the right most side uh, we can actually use the uh, the two tier model with the uh, self loop so that we can actually create a, a hybrid approach hi hybrid topology as well just to uh, quickly summarize the the flames uh, the abstraction uh, provides the provides the uh, easy topology update uh, uh, by allowing the small code changes and uh, because of the abstraction, communication abstraction, the, we can actually use the different communication mechanisms uh, the, uh, without uh, disrupting the, uh, the, the abstraction. Uh, I, I hope that uh, these, uh, the building blocks will help the, the transparent um, uh, ML operations for federated learning. So now, um, let me shift the gears towards the, uh, the, the um, how user can actually use the, our system. So let's say user want to build this simple two-tier topology. It is basically expressed as a, you know, a, a dumbbell topology. Then the, our library, SDK, actually uh, support uh, the base classes like aggregator and the trainer class, which basically implements the behaviors uh, required for the ag aggregator or the trainer. So for aggregator, it needs to be able to uh, it, it should be able to aggregate the local models or the distributed global model. And then for trainer, it should be able to upload local model and fetch uh, global model, right? All of these are actually uh, supported uh, out of box. And uh, we also implemented uh, you know, other uh, approaches uh, like a hybrid approach or the hierarchical approach and so on. Then the, what the user need to do is um, user actually inherit the, uh, this base class and then they implement their own the training logic. For example, how to load data and how to train a model, how to evaluate. These are the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the abstract method that, that uh, requires uh, the users to implement. Then uh, this will be packaged as the uh, job that we, you know, through the CLI tool or the, you know, we recently released the, uh, the user, the web-based GUI application in our repository. So then once the, 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 uh, the all these, uh, the specifications are specified as a job, then it can be submitted to the uh, control plane. Then the, the control plan will take care of the rest. So let's say the, the, the user submitted a job, then the controller will save some state in database. Then the, it also interacts with the cluster manager, such as a Kubernetes. Then the cluster manager will instantiate the you know, workers the, by using the, our container image. And the image act contains the, uh, an agent called the Flamelit, uh, which connects with the uh, control plane and fetches the, some details about the, um, the job itself and then launching the you know, training app in the, in the Kubernetes cluster. So then the, each training app has its own the specification. It could be, you know, in this particular example, the one training app is the, uh, uh, I mean, two, tra two training apps are train has a role of trainer and the, the, the other one has the, the role of aggregator. Now, you know, with this, uh, the, with the specification in each uh, worker, the, it'll actually form the uh, two-tier topology, and then the training, the federal learning prac, the, the procedure will be uh, executed. Then the model will be generated. We, we can actually save the model into the uh, model registry, such as the uh, ML flow. So uh, the, now the, I will actually do a quick demo. I, it's a you know, UI-based demo. As I already mentioned, uh, the, we actually deployed the uh, system components. I mean, not the deployed. Uh, we uh, released the uh, system components, the library components, and UI components in a, uh, the uh, monorepo. Therefore, users can actually use the, you know, any of these, thing, the, the, these components uh, separately. If you want to quickly uh, test the uh, flame, on your local machine, you can use the library only. Or if you want to uh, see if, how the system works, then you can actually use the, uh, the, the, uh, the system components uh, by using the Minikube 
we actually have uh, uh, the, the single machine setting called the PIAP, uh, the fl flame in a single box. You can actually use that too. And also we have uh, you know, the UI, so once they are the, the, the if you have uh, the Kubernetes cluster, you can actually use the, uh, uh, the UI as well. So let me quickly play the, uh, the demo. Hello and welcome to the Flame Dashboard Web Application Demo. The first section that I want to present is the design section. The user can create a new design by clicking on the Create New button. They have to input a unique ID, a name, and an optional description. After the design is saved, the user can start to build the tag. There are two ways to build the tag. Building it from scratch, the user can add roles. They can connect these roles with some channels, and they can see the details of each entity. The user can sell, uh, set a role as a data consumer. Furthermore, adding more groups to a channel will lead to multiple groups for each corresponding role. Another way to create a tag is by using a predefined tag template. After the user uploads a valid tag schema, they can add the code files for each role. So I'll add a code file for the trainer, one for the middle aggregator, and one for the top aggregator. After the user uploads the code files, then they can see how the tag can be expanded with some simulated workers. After all validation are complete, the user can save the changes by clicking on the save button. Once the design or tag is saved and valid, the user can create a job. Another important thing for a job are data sets. Flame manages data sets without leaking privacy. Users can register metadata for the data sets and Flame makes sure that the users work only access the, the data set during the training. Now let's move on and create a job. The user has to set a name to select the design. I'll go ahead with the one that I've just created. For the backend, there are two options, P2P and MQTT, and the timeout in seconds. On the next step, the user has to select data sets for each role, role that has a data consumer. Moving forward on the last step, the user has, if the user has a pre-trained model, they can input the name and the version number. On the optimizers and selector sections, the user can select from the list of these, each coming with different set of args. Lastly, the hyperparameter section are some default parameters and the user can add uh, some custom ones. Once the user filled everything, the save button can be clicked. After the job is created, we can start, start it by clicking on the start job option. After the job is completed, the user can check the results of the job by clicking on the name. So I'll go ahead to complete the job that was created with the uh, same tag that I've used for the previous one. And here's a real topology expanded from, from hierarchical FL tag. In order to see more details about the job, the user can click on the graph icon. The first section represents the timeline of each worker metrics for a better overview on how the job was executed. By clicking on each worker, the user can see more details about them, different metrics with their values, and by clicking on the top aggregator, besides the metrics and hyperparameters, the user can check and download the model that resulted from the execution of this job. That would be all. Thank you. So um, the uh, the this is the, you know the short demo. We are still actively developing the UI. We are going to actually add uh, the more features uh, that are developed for the the CLI. So. You know, stay tuned. Uh, uh, we'll actually make a, you know uh, releases uh, uh, pretty soon. Um, it is currently our the you know the uh, the overnight uh, the source source code. So here's a list of you know awesome people who actually contributed to this project. Uh, you know there are some backend developers and a couple of interns uh, over the last two years uh, contributed to this project and shaped you know the the current uh, um, the, the the architecture of the 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 project uh, and then the, you know they build a lot of the other features as well. So uh, just to finalize my uh, talk, uh, the Flame is actually a community-driven open-source project uh, for federated learning. Uh, it is uh, you know flexible and configurable. You know most importantly, extensible easily. 
Um, the, as opposed to the uh, other frameworks that has you know, low-level APIs, we actually abstract those and then provide a uh, well-defined structure for the uh, software engineers to develop the different topologies or different approaches. Uh, and so we think that uh, Flame can uh, facilitate the easy adoption of uh, fast evolving the uh, state-of-the-art uh, FL technologies. So uh, that is all. Uh, I'm happy to take uh, any questions you may have. Yes? Uh, probably uh, uh, it will be a uh, mic. So what are, um, are you aware that the real knife use cases who are using the GPU learning, what are those use cases and uh, why the distributed learning is, 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 is more suitable than the centralized one? So the, one of the, the, the uh, canonical use cases, uh, ap ap apart from the, um, the mobile, the keyword recommendation is the healthcare use case, right? The medical record are not easily shareable. And therefore, the individual hospitals will do the you know, training with their local data set. But the, the problem with the such model, it, such approach is that the, um, the, you can actually train a model with your uh, local, the local data set, but that's not easily generalizable. generalizable. Therefore, you take a model and then try to deploy it some other for some other hospitals, it's very likely that the model will not work. So that's a, that's a privacy related one. And then in addition to that, uh, let's say you actually shipped all the data, but then the, the, even if the hospitals are the, you know, put the their data into their cloud, still they rel are reluctant to share. So even in the, although data is uh, actually in the cloud, but uh, it's, it's not uh, shareable. In such a case, federated learning would be you know, a, a good solution. But this does not address the problem that the data itself could be leaked into the parameters in the model, right? Yeah. Even you, you do not leave the data. I mean, you leave data where they are, but. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a you know, different uh, uh, thread of uh, research work uh, that the uh, research community had, uh, had uh, put a lot of effort on. So that's uh, the, you know, let's say you have only one, one uh, user data, then the, you know, if you release the you know, model, then the, the model actually contains the old things about the, you know, one particular user, right, or user data. In such a case, you know, uh, the model may actually leak the you know, private information. So for that, uh, it's an extreme case, but uh, for that, the uh, research community uh, try to apply the differential, uh, the, you know, pr privacy algorithm and so on. So do you see any use cases in the IoT space, which this could be a good uh, uh, place, in my opinion? Um, so, I may not say that the IoT use case, but if you think about the, you know, uh, factory floor, there are a lot of sensors are, sensors are deployed to kind of monitor the, uh, the, uh, monitor the, the, the process of the production, right? And the, the, this uh, pre predictive uh, maintenance is an, an interesting uh, area, and the, the, you know, how to use the sensor da sensory data uh, across the different, uh, you know, factory floors or the, across different factories, uh, that might be a, a good use case for the federal learning too. Do you see any um, industry is using that? Last question. Um, I, I am not certain. <laughs> yeah, but the, we, we are interested in the, this predictive maintenance uh, use case. Okay, so if there is no further question, thanks for attending. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, event. Thank you. <laughs>